Welcome to everybody this afternoon, and particularly to the Secretary of Treasury, Mnuchin. The President's budget includes various proposals to confront a variety of policy issues, whether that's runaway spending, border security, national defense, the opioid epidemic, or health care costs, and all of the above, and more. The budget envisions receipts averaging 17.3% over the of GDP over the next 10 year slightly above the average of the past 50 years it has also outlays averaging 20% over 10 years about equal to the average of the last 50 years the budget contains some relatively minor tax proposals and proposes spending restraint to help achieve budget savings of around 2.8 trillion over 10 years. Those savings are significant even if they come to only a fraction of what some recent proposals from the other side might end up costing. Uh, as examples, Medicare for All or the Green New Deal. Uh, those uh, liberal leaning proposals would easily cost tens of trillions of dollars over decades and bring harm to employer-provided health insurance and radically restructuring the American economy. They'd add tens of trillions to the debt. The President's budget represents only a first step in our budget process where we learn of the President's priorities and proposals. As I often say, a President proposes, but Congress disposes. I can say that I agree that we must remain focused on important goals like reducing health care costs, continuing to rebuild the military, fighting against the opioid abuse, and addressing the security and humanitarian crisis at our southern border. And of all those I mentioned, three of the four at least are very bipartisan. <clears throat> I also know that this committee is ready to help accomplish some goals, uh, such as tackling issues surrounding high drug prices, as well as the mystery in drug pricing. Another very bipartisan approach I believe we can accomplish. I will note that the budget is being put forward in the setting of a robust economy, an economy that has been strengthening following enactment of tax reform. The economy and tax reform are benefiting Americans across the board. As you mentioned in your testimony, Secretary Mnuchin, the tax rate cuts, doubling of the standard deduction, and expanded child care tax credits give real benefits to hardworking middle class American families. And tax reform is fueling the economy. During the Trump administration generally, and especially since tax reform was enacted, economic growth has topped 3%. Business investment has been strong. Job creation has been robust. Real wage growth has accelerated and not seen this sort of picture for 10 years. And incomes have grown. In 2018, we saw more job openings than the number of people who were unemployed. And that signals a robust labor market. Unemployment has been remarkably low overall, and especially as the President can proudly point out, particularly among Hispanic and African American workers. And in my state of Iowa, unemployment stands at a record low 2.4%, the lowest rate of the 50 states. All of those strong economic numbers mean that hardworking Americans and their families are clearly benefiting from tax reform, Senator Wyden. 